Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about microwave attenuators. In the previous lecture, you had heard about various diodes. That lecture was given by one of my PhD student, Rinki Chopra, who is also course TA for this particular course. So today we are actually going to start with the microwave attenuators using resistors. These are known as fixed attenuators. And then we will talk about pin diode based attenuators, which are variable attenuators. So let's start today's lecture on microwave attenuators. So we'll start with the resistive attenuator and the network shown over here is a pi network. So you can see that there are three resistors are there, resistor R1, R2 and R2. And if you see this network looks like a pi shape, that is why it is known as pi network. One of the main property of the attenuator is that the input side as well as the output side should be matched with 50 ohm or you can say Z0. And the second thing is that it should provide an attenuation from port 1 to port 2 by let's say a factor of K. So we need to analyze this particular circuit but before that we can actually get an attenuation even by using a single resistor also. So think that R2 is not there. In that case, suppose if we have a single resistor R1, then what will be V2 divided by V1? It will be Z0 divided by Z0 plus R1. So suppose Z0 is 50 ohm and if I say let's say R1 is 50. So 50 divided by 50 plus 50 that will be 1 by 2. So we can say that the K will be equal to 2 because K will be defined as V1 by V2. It is an attenuator and not gain. In the case of gain, we always say V2 divided by V1. In case of attenuator, we generally define V1 divided by V2, which is a factor equal to K. So V2 divided by V1 for a single resistor R1 will be nothing but Z0 divided by Z0 plus R1. So for Z0 equal to 50 ohm and R1 equal to 50 ohm, value will be equal to 50 divided by 50 plus 50, which will be 1 by 2. So that is equal to V2 by V1, which means K is equal to 2. But if you look at the input impedance at that particular point, it will be 50 plus 50, that will be 100 ohm, which is not matched with this Z0, which is equal to 50 ohm. Again, we can get a larger attenuation if I take R1 equal to say 1 kilo ohm. So then this will be 50 divided by 50 plus 1000, which will be 50 divided by 1050. One can get very large attenuation. However, again, the problem will be that the input impedance now will be very high. It will be 50 plus 1000, which will be equal to 1050. So a lot of power will get reflected back from this particular port here. So one of the main condition is that the input looking from this side and output looking from this side should be matched to 50 ohm. So that means input impedance here should be equal to Z0. So for matching Z input should be equal to Z0. And since the network is symmetrical, so the output here will be also equal to Z0. So that's why we don't use a single resistor R1, but we use a pi network. In fact, later on, I'm also going to talk about a T network, which also can be optimized for impedance matching at both input side as well as output side. So let's see how we can do the analysis of this particular circuit. So first of all, let's find out here what is Z input. So we can say that Z input is nothing but R2 in parallel with the impedance seen over here. So that will be R2, 1 by Z input is equal to 1 by ZA plus 1 by R2, which is nothing but parallel combination of R2 with ZA. ZA is the impedance looking at this particular point here. So from here, we can say what is ZA? ZA is nothing but R1 plus R2 in parallel with Z0. So that is the expression for ZA. Now all we need to do is simplify this particular expression. So from here we can say ZA is equal to this particular expression over here. Now we also need to find out what is the voltage ratio. So we can say what is V1? V1 is nothing but I1 multiplied by this impedance which is equal to Z of A which we have written here already 
which is R1 plus R2 in parallel with Z0. And what is V2? V2 is nothing but this current I1 which is coming here and that will be multiplied by the parallel combination of the impedances which is R2 in parallel with Z0. So, that is the expression for V2. So, now if we take the ratio of V1 by V2 which we are defining as K and that is attenuation ratio. So, we can just simply see from here I1, I1 will get cancelled. So, this would be ZA divided by R2 in parallel with Z0. So, from here we can do simplification, we will get the expression for K. Okay? And if we simplify this particular expression further, so by using a few steps we get the expression for R2 which is given by Z0 multiplied by K plus 1 divided by K minus 1. Now, we can do little bit more of simplification. So, we can expand these things R1 which is nothing but Z A minus R2 in parallel with Z0 from the previous expression and using equation 1 we can simplify it and finally, after doing a few of these steps which you can follow through one by one, we get the final expression for R1 which is given by this particular term over here and we get expression for R2 which is given over here. So, just quickly we can see over here if k is very large, we can say if k is very large this expression will become approximately 1. So, we can say R2 will be approximately equal to Z of 0 and if k is very large we can say if it is very large then k square will be much greater than 1. So, we can neglect this term and this one would get cancelled here. So, the expression we will get is Z0 multiplied by k divided by 2. So, let us now see example for different values of attenuator. So, here we have given the values for 3 dB, 10 dB, 20 dB attenuation. Okay. So, from these values we can calculate first the numeric value. Now, here please remember that this is a voltage ratio. So, we have to take 20 log of k. So, 20 log of 10 will be 20 dB okay. and similarly we find the other values of k and by substituting the value of k in these expressions and taking Z0 as 50 ohm we get R1, R2 values which are given over here and you can actually see that as k is increasing if we take further instead of 20 dB if we take 30 dB this will tend towards which I had mentioned earlier will tend towards 50 ohm. Okay. And if you look at this expression over here, you can see that this is Z0 which is 50 into 10 that will be 500 divided by 2 that is 250, it is tending towards 250 here. Okay. So, that way we can do the validation. Okay. Now, the question comes where do we need attenuator? One can understand that we need amplifiers okay, because amplifier will amplify the signal why we want to attenuate the signal. So, there are many applications where we need attenuators. For example, let us say we want to measure the output of a let us say power amplifier even if we have a just 1 watt output. Now, that 1 watt output cannot be connected to the spectrum analyzer. A spectrum analyzer will actually measure the power and also gives the frequency spectrum. It will also give the harmonics of that particular amplifier. Now, one watt output cannot be directly connected to the spectrum analyzer. Majority of the spectrum analyzers which are available in the market, they can take absolute maximum input power as 0.1 watt, but majority of the time they would recommend 0.01 watt power. So, we cannot connect one watt output straight to the spectrum analyzer. So, now think about if we have a 20 dB attenuator. So, we give 1 watt, 20 dB attenuator will give us 0 0.01 watt power and that can be given to the spectrum analyzer. So, this is one of the application. There are many other applications where even variable attenuators are required. So, let me first finish the fixed attenuator. Here you can see that the resistor values are fixed. So, hence 
there will be a fixed attenuation. Of course, we can use variable resistor R1 and R2, and that can be then designed to obtain variable attenuator. However, we'll show you the applications of what was covered in the previous lecture, which was one of the device covered was pin diode. So today we will see how pin diodes can be used as variable attenuator. There is another way where we can analyze the pi network. So in the previous two slides, I had shown you how to do the analysis, but recall we have also studied ABCD parameters. So this particular network can be solved by using ABCD parameters. So let's see how we can do that. So here is a one segment here, then second segment and then third segment. So this can be thought about as a shunt admittance and we know that ABCD parameter for shunt admittance is 1, 0, Y, 1. So 1, 0, Y is equal to 1 by R2. Now this is a series impedance. So we know that ABCD parameters for series impedance is given by 1, Z, 0, 1. So here Z is equal to R1. So this is symmetrical with respect to this port over here. So this would be same as the first one. So 1, 0, 1 by R2 and 1. We multiply these three matrices and finally this expression is obtained. Now we use the conversion from ABCD parameters to S parameters. And I had mentioned to you easier way to remember, think about this as normalized ABCD. So A, B normalized will be B divided by Z0, C normalized will be C into Z0 plus D. And the numerator is A plus B minus C minus D. And S21 is equal to 2 divided by A plus B plus C plus D, which are basically normalized values. So once we know the expressions for S11, S21, now we have to put the condition. The first condition you can see over here is S11 is equal to 0. If S11 is equal to 0, that means reflected power will be equal to 0. And this also implies that Z input is equal to Z0. So if you put the condition of S11 equal to 0, so you can see from here, see A and D are equal, you can see here. So that means B divided by Z0 minus C Z0 should be equal to 0. So that will give you one condition. Second condition we have to put is S21 is equal to 1 by K. So you put over here 1 by K, solve these two equations, you will get the expressions for R1 and R2. These expressions are exactly same as what we had derived earlier. Now let's see another network which is a T network. So here the attenuation has been obtained by using T network using three resistors in a very similar way. So here again as before series resistance has been taken as R1, shunt resistance has been taken as R2. Analysis of this can be done in either of the previous two ways. You can actually think about writing a current over here, finding the voltage or you can write a node equation and then find the expression for V1 by V2 or you can use the second approach where you can use ABCD parameter. So you again divide the network into one here, then second one and then third one. So multiply the three ABCD matrices, get the final S parameters, okay? And again put the same condition that S11 should be equal to zero and S21 should be equal to one by K. By simplifying these equations, you will get the expressions for R1, R2. So I have written here what happens for large value of K. So if K is very large, we can say this expression will become approximately 1. So R1 will become Z0. And if K is very large, then this term will be negligible. So we can say this whole thing will be 2Z0 divided by K. So again, let's look at the different examples 3 dB, 10 dB, 20 dB. Correspondingly, K numerical value is listed over here. And then by using these two expressions and taking Z0 as 50 ohm, R1, R2 values are obtained. So you can see over here the resistance values are increasing 
and ultimately this will become 50 ohm which you can see from here R1 is equal to Z0 for large value of K and R2 is tending towards this particular expression here. So, we can actually check the value of R2 from here also which is 2 into Z0, 2 into 50, 100 divided by numeric value of K which is 10. So, 100 divided by 10, so you can see that it is tending towards 10. So, by using these resistor values, you can actually realize a fixed attenuator. Of course, you can actually speaking use variable resistor over here or you can use variable resistors here and that way you can actually speaking tune the attenuator. By using variable resistors, you can realize a variable attenuator. However, in practice that is not used, we use some different method which I am going to show you in the next few slides. So, in the previous lecture pin diodes were covered. So, we will just have a very quick look into that part. So, there is a P junction, I junction which is intrinsic junction and N junction. Okay. So, now instead of using resistor, we can use three pin diodes over here. But before we start thinking about using these three pin diodes, let us see where we have to operate and in which region we have to operate. Now, for pin diode, IV characteristics are shown over here. So, this is typical IV characteristic. Okay. What we need to do? We need to operate only in this particular region. Okay. When we want to use pin diode as a variable attenuator. So, when this particular diode is slightly forward bias, okay. in that particular case it has a series resistance which is given by this particular expression. This expression depends upon width of the ith layer which is over here. So, that means if this ith layer is large then width will be large and that would mean Ri will be large. Okay. It also depends upon the mobility and lifetime of carrier. However, these things are more dependent upon the device characteristics. Here we are going to focus more on the circuit performance. So, you can see over here that I0 which is DC bias current that is in the denominator. Okay. So, now think about these things are actually fixed quantity for a given pin diode. So, by changing the value of I0, we can change the value of Ri. So, let us just see here, if we take I0 for example, 1 micro ampere, we can see that Ri will be very large. Instead of 1 micro ampere, if we take say 10 micro ampere, then Ri will reduce by 10 times or if we take I0 as 100 micro ampere, then we can say that Ri will reduce further. So, by changing the current I0 from let us say 1 micro ampere to about 100 micro ampere, you can see that the resistance value can be changed by almost 100 times. So, we use these pin diodes over here as variable attenuator. Please remember that we are only going to do slightly forward bias. So, what happens if the diode is completely forward bias? In that particular case, you can see that the current will be relatively constant and that will not provide us a variable attenuator or variable resistor value. In fact, I am going to tell you in the next lecture another application of pin diodes where pin diodes will be used as switches, where when the pin diode is completely forward bias, it will be like a switch on. And if the pin diode is completely reverse bias, it will act like a switch off. Okay. However, we will see various variations of switches in the next lecture. So, here there is a only one word of caution which I want to mention and that is we can change the value of the resistance of D1, D2, D3 by providing external biasing circuit. So, when I talk about pin diodes as switches, I will show you the biasing circuit. So, the same biasing circuit can be used over here, but here I just want to tell the concept of the variable attenuator and the problems associated with it. So, the problem associated with this is that these three values of resistances of the pin diode should vary according to the formulas which have been given for the 
you can see here this is similar to a pi network so for the pi network we had seen the values of r1 and r2 varying so we have to change these values according to that and this becomes difficult sometimes okay so there is an alternate solution also so let's look at the alternate solution of this particular problem so here what we have variable attenuator using coupler so let's see what we have here so input is given at port 1 output is taken at port 2 port 3 and port 4 you can actually see that there are diodes are there even though i have written d1 d2 but in reality we generally take these two diodes identical and for many practical attenuators you don't even need z0 over here so you don't need to have any transmission line at the end here so in fact this can be removed it is not always required so only this thing will do the job so let's see the working of this particular network so quadrature hybrid in fact you just think about it is a two branch coupler so please now imagine this is a two branch coupler so one line will be here another line will be here and there will be two branches over here so the property of the two branch coupler is that when we give a input at port 1 so output at port 3 will have a minus 90 degree phase delay and output at port 4 will have a minus 180 degree port delay now depending upon the resistor value so just imagine that this is a zero value here so if the resistance is zero here that means everything will get reflected everything will get reflected so this reflected wave at this particular point will go back to over here so there will be another delay of minus 90 so minus 90 another minus 90 will be 180 degree so this is what i have written here minus 180 degree and this is the magnitude which is reflected back from port 3 let's see what happens to the reflection from port 4 so input from 1 goes to port 4 with the phase delay of 180 degree and then it reflects back to this port 1 so that will be another 180 degree so the total phase from here to here and then back to this particular point will be 360 degree and if we take these two diodes identical and they are biased identically that means their resistance will be also same in that case a3 will be equal to a4 and if this condition is satisfied the sum of these two things will be equal to zero that means reflected power will be equal to zero at port one let's see what happens at port two so now the reflected power from here let's say from here it goes minus 90 degree and from minus 90 degree it experiences another 180 degree delay so that will be 90 another 90 another 90 so total 270 degree phase delay let's see what happens to the reflection from port 4 so from here 90 90 180 and then another 90 that will be 270 so if again now if a3 is equal to a4 these two will add together identically so whatever is the input here that will actually go to the output depending upon these resistances value so again now let me go through one more time if it is short then everything will reflect back that means there will be zero attenuation here except for some losses in the hybrid network now think about if this is 50 ohm we are assuming that this does not exist here so if this is 50 ohm that means nothing will reflect back and if nothing reflects back output will be equal to zero so by changing the diode impedance from zero to 50 ohm you can actually get an output which is from zero to one okay or you can say so by changing the diode impedance from zero to 50 ohm we can get the output which is going to be from minimum to maximum you can do other way around also we can change the diode impedance from 50 ohm to a very large value even 1 kilo ohm same effect will be noticed over here so we can provide attenuation simply by changing the resistance values of these two diodes which we should take as identical so a single biasing circuit can bias 
both of these diodes. So here then you have to change only one biasing voltage and by changing that biasing voltage we can change the value of output. There is only one limitation of this particular circuit that is that the bandwidth of a two branch coupler is relatively narrow it may be about 10 to 20 percent. So this attenuator will work in 10 to 20 percent region. If you want a larger bandwidth instead of using two branch we can use three branch coupler or we can use four branch couplers and we have discussed these couplers in the previous lectures. So you can use those things to realize a relatively broadband variable attenuator. Now instead of using pin diodes we can also use MESFET. What is MESFET? You will learn in detail more about MESFET after few lectures but just to mention you might be knowing about MOSFET. What is MOSFET? Metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. In MESFET basically oxide layer is not there. So here ME stands for metal ok. So this is metal semiconductor field effect transistor. So I am just telling the principle of this particular configuration here. So you can see at this particular point there is a input and there is a output here. These are the two control voltages which are shown over here ok. So what is this particular configuration? You can see that this is the series component, this is the series component and this is the shunt component. So by changing the value of the current over here the resistance of this part is changed, resistance of this is changed in the same fashion. You can see that this is being controlled by voltage V1 and if you recall series resistance should be same. And here is a shunt resistance. So the value of the shunt resistor is controlled by voltage V2 ok. So we have to change these V1 and V2 according to the values given for the T network which consisted of R1, R1 and R2. So here I just want to mention here so by changing the value of V1 and V2 the value of the resistance varies from small r on to large r off ok. So by changing the value of the biasing voltages V1 and V2 we can change the attenuation value. In fact for this particular configuration these are some of the specifications given over here. So for frequency range 2 to 12 gigahertz they could obtain a 17 dB dynamic range but over a larger frequency range 2 to 18 gigahertz the dynamic attenuation range was about 12 dB ok. And for this particular configuration S11 obtained was better than 10 dB and minimum insertion loss was about 2 dB. So from here to here minimum insertion loss is 2 dB and after that there is a dynamic range of 12 dB. So that means from here to here you can get 2 dB to 14 dB attenuation. Now again the only problem in this particular case is that V1 and V2 must vary in such a way that the resistances R1 and R2 should follow the T network values ok. So there may be a small problem as resistance changes with the voltage the input impedance may not be matched. I just want to mention about the software which I had recommended earlier for designing filters. That same RF SIM 99 software can be used to design attenuator also. So there is a, again an option you can go to that design then go to attenuator and there they will ask you you want the T type network or pi type network just enter 3 dB or 10 dB or 20 dB or 30 dB whatever attenuation you want and it will straightway give you the values of R1 and R2. Now I also want to mention many a times the values of R1 and R2 which you calculate theoretically may not be available practically in the market. So what do you do then? So whatever the nearest practical values of resistors available you put those values in the RF SIM 99 and then do the simulation and RF SIM will give you the plots of S21 and S11. So please ensure that S11 remains below minus 30 dB. In fact when you take the ideal values you will actually see S11 is close to minus 
infinity dB, but S11 less than minus 30 dB is acceptable for most of the application. And then you can see what is the value of S21 and accordingly you can choose the right value of the resistors to obtain desired value of the attenuation. I am also going to show you one another thing which is a variable attenuator IC available in the market. So, I have just given a one example. Okay? So, I am not promoting this particular company. Okay? I am just telling that this is one of the IC available. So, the number is given over here. So, let us see what we have over here. So, here you can see this is the control voltage and this particular thing actually uses gallium arsenide MOSFET. Again, these are the IC manufacturing thing. We as a circuit designer are not really getting deep inside the IC. So, we will look at how to use this particular attenuator. Okay? So, you can see over here there is a one RF port here one, this is a RF port 3. You can use this as input, you can use this as output or you can use this as input or this can be used as output. It does not matter because it is a symmetrical network and there is a ground connection over here. So, simply by varying one single voltage here. So, I want to mention here that here we do not need two different voltages, a single voltage has to be varied. Now, this is not the complete circuit. Okay? The circuit has many more things. This is just a symbolic representation. Okay? So, let us see what is the performance we get over here. Okay? So, they have actually mentioned that the frequency range is DC to 2.5 gigahertz. Insertion loss is 3.5 dB. So, that means even for zero attenuation which shows over here. I just want to first tell what this is. It shows here attenuation versus control voltage. So, we can see here if the control voltage is minus 3 volt attenuation is 0 and then you can see that attenuation is increasing. Three different curves are for three different frequency values. This curve is for 50 megahertz, this curve is for 1 gigahertz, this curve is for 2.5 gigahertz. So, I just want to mention what this insertion loss of 3.5 dB means. So, even though it shows 0 dB attenuation, but in reality it is a 0 dB plus insertion loss of 3.5 dB. So, when you give control voltage of minus 3 volt, then from input to let us say output, it will be attenuated by 3.5 dB. Let us take a case of 50 megahertz. You can see for 50 megahertz for control voltage equal to 0, we get about 30 dB attenuation. So, 30 plus 3.5, it will be 33.5 dB attenuation. Now, however, be careful what is your frequency of operation. Okay? Suppose you are operating at 1 gigahertz or you are designing an attenuator around 1 gigahertz frequency. Please do not use this particular curve. Now, you better use this particular curve here. You can see now that the attenuation is about 25 dB. So, as you change the control voltage from minus 3 to 0 volt, the attenuation range will be from 0 to about 25 dB. And if you are operating around 2.5 gigahertz, which is the frequency of Wi-Fi, then in that particular case, you can see that the attenuation is of the order of 20 dB only. Okay? So, control voltage varies from minus 3 to 0, attenuation will vary from 0 to 20 dB. Please add 3.5 dB in all these cases. Now, what is the significance of this here? It actually says P input is equal to 21 dB maximum. So, 20 dB is equal to 0 0.1 watt. Okay? So, you cannot pump more than 0 0.1 watt power over here. If you pump more than that power, this IC may get burnt. And this is relatively low cost IC. You can actually see that price varies from 100 to 150 and depending upon the quantity. And this again I have just given as a reference. I am not promoting this particular website in any which way. 
and you will see that when you go to the website or you go to any other website you will actually see that the price changes a lot depending upon the quantity so if you want to buy just one or 10 pieces it will cost much more if you buy 1000 or 10000 or 1 million pieces then the cost will be much smaller okay so just to summarize today's lecture so we started with fixed attenuator so we discussed about two different configurations. We started with the pi network and then we talked about T network and these were fixed resistive attenuators. Then we talked about pin diode as variable resistor and then we used three pin diodes to design a variable attenuator. I did mention to you about the problem part. The problem with that is that the voltages have to be controlled properly so that the resistance values vary according to the attenuation desired. So I also talked about one another simpler configuration where one can use a branch line coupler terminated with two identical pin diodes and just by changing the bias voltage we can vary the value of attenuation. Then we talked about MESFET and the IC which can be directly used as a variable attenuator. So in the next lecture, we will see more applications of pin diode and the application which we are going to talk about would be microwave switches. Thank you very much.